All right, we've accomplished a, uh, a little bit more. Let me turn the camera around and show you uh, what the next steps were and what will come after this. Okay, so where we left off with the last batch of work, obviously none of this was here. We just had the, uh, the empty hole. I had it screeded uh, almost perfectly flat with just a very, very gradual slope uh, towards this corner, which is where the pumps will be. Uh, and we had a about a 30 or 32 inch uh, diameter hole dug about six inches deep at the bottom of that. There was a little depression there for this pump vault, which is made out of 24 inch uh, HDP. It's called N12 pipe. It's a dual wall pipe. It's, you know, it's like a drainage pipe that they use on commercial projects. I found a chunk of it for sale on Craigslist. So I went and picked it up and Okay, so once we had that, once we had the empty hole, what I did is I laid down underlayment, just like you would for any other pond project. Um, got that in all nice and tight, and then dragged the liner in. Uh, did my uh, did my liner origami uh, to get it uh, to get it to lay flat in the bottom of the hole with the depression, and uh, you know get get a nice uh, get it nice and loose in all of the corners so that you're not ever. No matter how no matter how well you fill it up, you never like you know you don't have a tight tugging spot. You want a little bit loose uh, all the way around, and then you can see kind of folded over the top of this first layer of crates here is another layer of underlayment, which that just covers the bottom of the hole and protects the uh, protects the liner from any sharp edges on these uh, on these milk crates. Which there aren't any sharp edges on these milk crates, but it's a very cheap easy insurance to add and then once all that was in the next piece of work to happen was this the pump vault here's what the bottom of that pump vault looks like there's about 201 inch holes drilled into the first five ribs spaced two inches on center and each row is offset 50 percent from the one below it I wanted the surface area of the holes to add up to about five times the area of four three inch outflow pipes which is the most I could ever imagine running in this pond. And that's only if I wanted to create some thunderous Niagara Falls like flow. With this layout, all the infiltration of the pumps happens below the first level of milk crates, which means that the cistern can run very low on water before the pumps begin to starve. The culvert pipe is really heavy and it was already in the hole. So instead of lifting it out to drill all the holes, uh, I just set it up on some milk crates and kept it from rolling off with some bricks. Uh, it, made, it made a big mess of plastic bits in the hole, so I blew the debris into a corner with a leaf blower and then sucked them up with a shop bag. Uh, my drilling hand was really tired after all those holes. And then here's the vault installed in the sump pit and with drain rock uh, around it. That allows the crates to sit level right up next to the vault and it provides good water infiltration into the vault. Then I did a little bit of... Uh... A little bit of you know kind of like lego work to see how the crates were going to lay out around you know the square square quate crates <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna lay out around uh you know this round uh cylinder around this cylinder for the pump vault and i got lucky in that with my uh, with my over excavation right so the hole is actually about uh eight inches bigger in the um uh, yeah, the hole is about eight inches bigger than the than you know the dimensions of the actual than the dimensions of the actual crates. And what that allows me to do is it gives me a little wiggle room to arrange you know to get the crates aligned exactly how I want them. And then once they go in there, uh, you can fold the line you can fold the liner back and you backfill with native soil around it. And that just locks that will lock all of those uh, all of those crates together so they're very very tight and sturdy. Uh, so anyways, I got lucky in the sense that uh, they laid out almost perfectly. And I'll try to walk over here and show you. I'm trying to fall in the hole with this mess of a liner here. There's not too much void space there. And so just on one side there and a little bit on the other side, uh, I'll have to, you know, use some, uh, maybe some like really large gravel or something and fill that in so that that corner stays tight uh, and locked in. But that should be easy enough. Uh, another option I heard, I talked to, uh, you know, I'm always hanging out on the gardenpondforums.com. I'm always hanging out over there talking to the folks who've built lots of this kind of stuff. Uh, 
I'm probably only the maybe only the fourth or fifth person in the community who's who's built a negative edge like this. Um, but the people who have are extremely helpful and they gave me some ideas for this. Uh, if it had laid out differently, where there was going to be a really large gap, uh, a really good idea I heard was to actually cut, uh, cut, the, uh, cut the vault up and notch, basically just notch the vault out so that the blocks sit inside of the vault a little bit and, uh, and then the, the top of the notch would just rest on the top row of blocks and then you'd have you know lots and lots of infiltrate water infiltration into that space you wouldn't, never, wouldn't have to worry about drilling any holes or anything because that entire area would be full uh, I might still do something similar to that but I just got lucky and happened to be that with the with the outside diameter of this pipe and the the dimensions of these milk crates that it just laid out almost perfectly nothing on this project has gone perfectly so I'm really tickled that uh, <laughs> that I got one little really easy win so I don't have to do that, but so what I'm going to do next, and this is this will be the next piece of work, is fold the liner back on each edge, and I'll just fill in, you know, with native soil and tamp it down to lock in this first layer of blocks, and then I'll build up from there. I'm going to fold the liner back out, put in another layer of blocks, put in a second layer, and then fold the liner in again, tamp it down, you know, fill it back in, you know, backfill with native soil, tamp it in really well, and just keep going until I have all three, and then we'll be into a whole nother scope of work after that.